Here's yeah. where here's where I kind of started my show today. So right. the big three of 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 Steph, Dre, and Clay, like if they were to win it this year, all right, it would be five titles in nine years, and they would be the core for all of them, essentially. I know Durant was here, but it's a three man and I yeah. so I've just gone back and you know, the Lakers have won five titles in the last eleven years when they had Kobe. He was the singular guy who had five. You know, Shaq only had three. What, what I'm getting at is, like, it is really hard to find, like, a, a three-person core that's stuck together for so long and might win it almost a decade apart. There's usually some kind of iteration of it. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and what makes that, I, I, I agree with that, and what makes it harder now, are you still with me? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. What makes it harder now is that it's harder than it was, let's say, back in the days of the full free agency and all right. that stuff. Because uh, back then, you couldn't go anywhere. If you were a great player on a team or a good player or a, one of the core three guys, you couldn't go anywhere. Now you can go somewhere every year almost. Guys change around all the time. So to keep that core together in these times, especially now when when guys are assembling super teams on the fly and all that stuff, it's much harder to do. So I agree with you. It's, it, would be, it would be a phenomenal feat. And it would probably never happen again. Scott, let me ask you this about this this current Warrior team. And I'll call it what I called it a couple of days ago, the debacle with James Wiseman and the trade with GP2. How is Scott Osler feeling about the current uh, addition of the Golden State Warriors and their chances of going back-to-back? -back? Well, probably not too good. I'll say this. Two things about that, the, the trade and all that stuff, is that Wiseman, I understood they, they got rid of him because he was not fitting in. Um, I'm not sure... The, the the line now is that it was a terrible idea to draft him in the first place. I'm not sure that's that's true because, you know, they drafted him after a terrible year. They were the worst team in the league. And at the time, he is, was what they needed. They needed youth. They needed athleticism. Even now, every team they play, uh, the thing you hear on TV and, and radio and all this stuff is, oh, my God, the Warriors are playing Team X. This team is really young and athletic. Well, the Warriors n knew there was a deficiency there, so... Uh, Wiseman was going to help make up for that. And uh, had, had he gone to, had Wiseman, that passed on Wiseman, he goes to a, a, a worse team, a terrible team, and does well, what people would be saying now is, my God, the Warriors are idiots. They passed on James Wiseman. Look at him. He's averaging 14 points and 11 rebounds. How could they do that? So, um, so I'm not saying that was a, necessarily a bad trade. And when I heard about that it was Gary Payton coming, I was, I was jacked up. I was thrilled. I thought that was tremendous. I thought Peyton was as much credit as everything as he got last season. I thought he was, in a way, underrated. I thought he made a huge difference. And had he come to the team right now fully healthy and ready to rip, I think he would make a huge difference because God knows they need defense, and, and he just fit in so beautifully with them. So, but the way I feel about it now, <laughs> I'm kind of, kind of pessimistic, I think. Uh, Scott Osler. I think Peyton's going to come back. Yeah, Scott Osler joining us on the Bud Light guest line, uh, writes for the San Francisco Chronicle. I guess that's, uh, can you think of a, a team, let's say, uh, in the past that's that's just kind of foundered like the Warriors are foundering right now and turned it on to win it? I mean, we you know, the Rockets were, the, were a six seed, so you, you got to talk about them. The Bullets won it in 78 with 44 wins, but it, it's hard to do in the NBA because you're going to be a, you know, if they're 500 means they're a seven seed. Yeah. Not, not pondering or floundering or whatever the proper word is like they are now. Last year, they kind of went through that. They went through some doldrums and, and picked themselves up and were kind of surprised and big finish team and all that stuff. But, but nothing like this year, it would be it's like your court three uh, proposition. It would be, it would be amazing if they turn it down around from 500 now and, and, and uh, stormed all the way through and won the thing. It would be just, yeah, beyond belief. Scott, it's interesting when you, you think about this first half of the season, uh, you think about the punch with Draymond Green and, and, and Jordan Poole, and I remember the Saturday I'm watching ABC and Woj reports that Bob Myers is without a contract. Can you share with us when you got that initial news and just what you think about that situation now with Bob basically being, a you know, hanging in the wind? Yeah, one thing about the Warriors is they don't let a, a ton of stuff leak out like that. Like, Lake, uh, I don't think, has a lot of sources he leaks stuff out to, and Bob Myers is sort of certainly 
not a guy who throws himself in the spotlight and gets in the middle of stuff like that by leaking stuff out. So it's hard to say. It's hard to say what, what Bob really wants to do. You know, he's such yep. an intense guy, and he you wonder how long he can keep up his level of intensity because he's a 24-7 kind of grinder, warrior, uh, anxiety-ridden guy. You know, he walks around with the weight of the world on his shoulders all the time. And uh, that's got to be tough, man. That's got to weigh in you. So you got to wonder if he's maybe thinking about some other line of work, doing something else for a while, just branching out. And there's also the money thing that, uh, you know, reportedly the the athletic had the story and all the stuff about how um, it was kind of indicated he might feel he's underpaid. And he and Lake could come to kind of come to virtual blows on that too. So, um, well, that makes things rocky. Yeah. Because what are they going to do? What happened? If they, it's not just that they could get another general manager, but he's such a part of the fabric of the team. Yeah, you know he's really, really close with Kurt. You know they're 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 very tight. They're close friends. They they bonded over mutual tragedies uh, three or four years ago. They were already close. And they're that much closer, and uh, it it just wouldn't be easy. It just wouldn't be just a plug in thing. Yeah, Scott Osser joining us on the uh, Bud Light guest line. I I do remind people, and you might have more insight on this uh, th- than than most is. You know, he he said goodbye to Jerry West, and and it wasn't exactly with a smile and a handshake. Yeah, and and Jerry West was the guy who came here because Lake really loved and admired him and respected him, and so um, it wasn't. And he was Joe's guy, so Joe let him walk. I I'm still not clear on exactly how what the what the problem was. I know Joe has told me, you know, because there were the reports that he was trying to lowball Jerry or maybe give him a, a cut in pay or something like that. And, and Lincoln told me it wasn't, wasn't about money. Um, I think money was involved. I think money was part of it because for one thing you got Steve Ballmer down there probably just had an unlimited, right. Uh, expense, a, a checkout for Jerry West, you know, whatever it takes, Jerry, whatever they pay you, I'll pay you a third more or whatever. So money did factor into it, but yeah, um, that, but you can only let so many people, Slip away like that before you kind of lose the fabric of the team. And losing West was, I think, hurt him a little bit. But losing Myers would be, would be a big blow. That'd be a big, huge change. Yeah. Scott, you covered all, so I, I got to take advantage of this time we have with you. We just saw Sunday the Chiefs win Super Bowl Fifty Seven. Niners almost got there. We saw Brock Purdy get hurt. He's about to have surgery. To what extent we don't know. But Stani and I go back and forth. I'm concerned. He's not. He'll be back there. When you kind of assess, you know, who's got the, the, the edge or if Trey Lance, you know, his starting days with the Niners are done, how, how, how do you look at the, the current situation for the Niners quarterback? The way I look at it is Trey will be in there at, at the start, most likely, because Brock's probably not going to be back and fully ready to go. So I'm, I'm looking at Trey as their kind of fill-in starter for the first couple games at least. And if he does okay um, – I'm not saying they'll keep him in a starter unless he looks so phenomenal that he blows everybody away, but it will give them an indication that he's a good guy to keep around. And, and because they, they go through quarterbacks, they're not going to, they can't go in with one quarterback opening day. and think that's going to be their guy. So, so I think they're in a good spot. I I really think they're in a good spot because we, we know what uh, rock can do and we don't know what Trey can do. So we're going to get a chance to see that. So it's all good. Scott Alser joining us on 95.7 The Game on the Bud Light guest line. Last one, uh, as long as we're going to hit a, a couple sports. Let me just ask you this. What's your what's your excitement level for the start of baseball season? <laughs> I'm kind of fired up. I, for one thing, I like the pitch clock. I know the, a lot of the purists and all this stuff don't like pitch clock. I like the idea they're going to speed it up a little bit. It, it was getting ridiculous. It's, it's like free throws in the NBA in a way. You know, the guy shoots a free throw and he walks away and celebrates with this team and has a picnic and all that stuff. You know, it's like, you know, when it's just get out on the mound and pitch the ball. So I think that's going to be great. I'm looking forward to that locally. It'd be interesting because um, I'm anxious to see what the giants are going to do. If, if this year they make a breakthrough, because if they don't, if they stink again, they're probably going to have to rip things up starting with maybe the manager and the, and Barnett. Yeah. To me, the, the interesting thing that's going to be to watch this season will be the A's because in some ways that they're, going to be the most interesting team in baseball because they're they're so bad and they're so poorly paid and the organization is so bad the ownership and and the president um 
and the one foot out the door and all that stuff. It's just, it's so bizarre. It's almost like a bad movie. So I'll be looking forward to seeing that and kind of like watching a train wreck or something. But, uh, so I'm, I'm fired up. Interesting. All right. Well, listen, love having you on, Scott. Uh, it was great seeing you uh, a few weeks and months back, and uh, hopefully we can have you on again. And tell the missus that Johnson said hello, Scott. You know you're my number okay. one. I will, and I'll see you guys at the next party, and uh, it's okay if you leave me off the mountain. It's okay. I'm, All right. You're my guys. All right. Yeah. Scotty Osler on the Bud Light guest line.